all commended the youth group, described its members as industrious and productive young Gambians, worthy of emulation. The vice president also received another youth group called Gomsabop of Bakau. The association, according to its coordinator, is engaged in music and film production and was at State House to solicit support in their bid to help improve the country's music and film industry. They, however, lamented the issue of land since the association, according to its coordinator, Draman Ture, has planned to establish a standard studio to help ease music and film production. They believe that the establishment of the studio will mean that Gambian musicians will not have to go beyond the country to produce their works. The group, as in the case of all others, was assured of government support by the vice president, who also urged them to liaise with the relevant authorities, such as the National Youth Council and the National Center for Arts and Culture, to help in dealing with the issues they raise. Last to call on the vice president at her office was the manager West Africa Division Country Operation Department of the Islamic Development Bank, who was led to State House by the finance minister. After meeting the vice president, the IDB official shed light on his mission to State House. It comes at the end of uh, a mission that uh, the Islamic Development Bank has uh, been undertaking in the Gambia for the past uh, one week uh, to uh, 10 days. Um, the mission itself uh, was here to try to work you know, with the government to look at you know, the cooperation you know, program you know, between the Gambia and the Islamic uh, Development Bank and uh, try to identify you know, new projects that will be implemented in the Gambia over the next uh, three years. Silla went further to explain what the projects entail. We are concluding you know, the mission uh, today and uh, we have been able to um, um, uh, identify a number of projects uh, in the tune of uh, about uh, 20 uh, you know, projects um, worth over 400 and, uh, f uh, let me tell you, 450 million dollars, uh, 470 million dollars to be precise. And in this, uh, we are planning IDB financing to the tune of uh, 160 million dollars over, over the next three years. Um, uh, this will be in various you know, sectors of the economy, agriculture, education, you know, uh, health, you know, transport and uh, industry, as well as you know, water and sanitation. Um, these are all priority areas you know, that uh, the government considers you know, under the program for accelerated growth and employment, and uh, the Islamic Development Bank you know, would do its utmost. The projects highlighted are priority areas under the Program for Accelerated Growth and Employment. Thus, the intervention of the IDB will go a long way in fast-tracking its attainment. Aysa Tubajan Sar, GRTS. Meanwhile, a senior, a senior IMF visiting official accompanied by the Finance and Economic Affairs Minister, as well as the Governor of the Central Bank of the Gambia, called on the Vice President, High Excellency Aja Dr. Aysa Dunjai Saidi, on Thursday. Mwekezi Majoro, a Lesotho national and a permanent Gambian representative in the IMF board, shared with John Lee's matters discussed with Dr. Njai Saidi behind closed doors. Oath of allegiance to the state. I, Second Lieutenant Sohna Baji, having been commissioned and appointed to the rank of Lieutenant in the Armed Forces of the Republic of the Gambia, hereby swear on the Holy Quran that I shall bear true allegiance and absolute loyalty to the Republic, Republic of the Gambia. Gambia at all times. So help me God. Okay. Oath of allegiance to the Commander-in-Chief. I, Brigadier General Sheikh II, having been commissioned and appointed to the rank of Major General in the Armed Forces of the Republic of the Gambia, hereby swear on the Holy Quran that I will bear true allegiance and absolute loyalty to the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Republic of the Gambia at all times. So help me God. Having been promoted to various ranks from Second Lieutenant to Major General, these 39 gallant men and women of the Gambia Armed Forces took the oath of office, secrecy, trust, allegiance to the state, Commander-in-Chief and to the people of the Gambia at a ceremony presided over by the Vice President and Minister for Women's Affairs, who is also the Chairperson of the National Security Council. Their promotions were endorsed by the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Gambia Armed Forces after they were proven to be hardworking and committed to their duties. However, you must not forget that 
such progress goes along with daunting challenges and increased responsibilities. You will thus need to work harder in order to be able to handle the numerous responsibilities that go along with such personal achievements. Our head of state is somebody with fecundity of thought. He is very sensitive and is also very observant. Today it is by dint of hard work and resolute commitment that you've come here today to be rewarded by God Almighty and our beloved president for promotions that you well deserve. This country deserves nothing. Your commander in chief deserves nothing in repayment <coughs> other than being continued to be proud of each and every one of you and through you, the men and women in the Gambia Armed Services. The vice president and minister for women's affairs told the officers that promotion to be seen as a challenge and not just a merit and commended the president and the commander in chief of the Gambia Armed Forces for having the welfare of Gambians at heart. But this is not the first time. It's only during the Second Republic we've been having so many promotions, not just in the army, let me tell you that, not just in the security services. The Secretary General will tell you, it's unprecedented. He gives every Gambian an opportunity, if that opportunity is available, and particularly when you deserve the opportunity. I remember in many instances he's told you that promotions in the army, just as in the rest of the public service, is not based on seniority or length of service, but it's based on performance and diligence. Vice President Jai Sedi also urged them to continue to lift the Gambian flag high in all their undertakings with discipline, commitment, and loyalty to authorities and to their duties at all times. I say to Biden, sir, GRPS. We apologize for bringing you that wrong story. Meanwhile, a visiting senior IMF official accompanied by the Finance and Economic Affairs Minister, as well as the Governor of the Central Bank of the Gambia, called on the Vice President, High Excellency Aja Dr. Aisad Njai Saidi, on Thursday. Moeketsi Majoro, a legislator national and a permanent Gambian representative in the IMF board, shared with John this matters discussed with Dr. Njai Saidi behind closed doors. Yeah, the purpose of my visit is basically to uh, refresh the instructions that I get from my authorities so that I can uh, represent them effectively at the board. Mm -hmm. I work with 24, 23 other colleagues at the board and my job is to present uh, and represent the Gambia mm -hmm. effectively mm -hmm. and for that to happen I need to always refresh the instructions mm -hmm. to make sure that I fully understand mm -hmm. Uh, the imperatives and the issues that are of upper, uppermost importance for the Gambia. And this is the, uh, uh, the type of work and the type of discussion that I had with the Vice President. So for how long have you been um, on this job, like representing the country at that level? I, I've been representing the Gambia for now uh, just under uh, one year. Uh, however, I was an alternate executive director uh, already for the Gambia uh, since uh, late 2008. So effectively I've been in this capacity for about three years. So but the IMF uh, must have been, uh, all, then they must have been also monitoring the um, uh, financial performance of the country, so uh, of the Gambia, I mean. So um, how is, uh, what would you say uh, in, uh, in, in terms of that maybe with the with, with IMF uh, idea about the um, financial policy of the country, how is it assessing that? What is it saying about the economy of the country? In, in terms of what you said? Well, the, the performance of the uh, uh, Gambia economy is broadly satisfactory. There are some challenges which uh, uh, the minister and the governor are addressing. Certainly, uh, the Gambian economy is undergoing a transformation, and it is for the authorities to uh, understand this transformation and to take policies that uh, will adjust uh, towards the transformation that uh, uh, we are uh, seeing. But uh, broadly, the IMF staff, ourselves, have a sense that the, uh, the, Gambian of, uh, the Gambian economy is performing reasonably well, but that there are challenges that need to be addressed. Okay. So, uh, following the 